is October about to begin as we close out the month of September and Q3, or will the market continue to move naturally as it always does? This episode, I'm going to take a look at the market as I normally do. Um, you know, terms like October and up only and all these things, trust me when I say I've used them in the past, even myself. Uh, it's something that I've come to realize is not a thing. It's not the uh, in the nation in the nature that most people think they are right. Like um, when we see big moves up, we are always going to get a correction. You're always going to see a pullback. And here's probably the most annoying time frame. Um, that we may see coming soon, especially if Bitcoin does move on and breach the all time highs here, which I do anticipate in the next coming weeks, is that every time we see a move up, it's going to be up only season, God candles and, you know, extreme euphoria almost. And then every slight pullback, it's extreme fear right away because it's like, is the bull market over? Is the bull market over? Is it going to be a bear market? It's 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 the same thing time and time again. We we saw it last, you know, run, and it's a little exhausting if you're gonna, you know, fall into that category. So for me, I try to stay away from that um, as far as the the emotion of that would go. Uh, for me, I'm just looking at the market as as a whole, you know, expecting some impulse moves, you know, certain pullbacks as they you know should and could come, and why. Uh, and I'm going to break down at least, you know, on a high time frame, what we're looking at for Bitcoin, why the pullback, you know, this morning pretty much occurred, how you could have traded it and what you could be looking for next, or at least what I am. Right. So uh, let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right on into Bitcoin. So on a high level here, we're all familiar with the overall range we've been trading in basically since the beginning of the year back in February here. Right. We've been, you know, making our way through it, you know, deviating to the lows, deviating to the highs, what have you. We broke back into this range once again. Uh, on the 19th of September uh, and have been pretty much just making a, a nice jaunt uh, up to the upside here, right? Now, one quick thing I did want to actually put in here as I uh, just kind of noticed it myself even uh, is that the range has shifted a little bit in the sense of the point of control. So when the data was still back here, right, being built up, that was kind of the last time I put it up uh, sometime last week uh, when we had the overall point of control sitting here at 70 or 67K. And that's pretty much been the overall point of control, which is the highest traded area of volume uh, in a section of the chart has been that way, you know, pretty much ever since even back to here, right? So uh, this is a dynamic, you know, range at the moment because we are still building it out. So that means it can change. It's almost like a moving average at the end of the day. Um, so, you know, for, for the majority of this whole time, we've been seeing this at 67K. If you actually pull the volume profile over all the way now to the newest data, uh, we can see that the point of control has shifted down a little bit, pretty much uh, towards the middle here. You can still see the high volume node. I mean, it's it's almost... I'd say it's probably tied, um, you know, between these two areas. But regardless, uh, just something of note here. Uh, I'll probably actually change this overall POC uh, label, but there is still a monthly naked point of control there, which is a uh, a nice volume target to you know be aware of to the upside. But as far as this range goes itself, we are well within it, right? We got a nice little back test of it, you know, previously. We are, you know, traveling up through the middle here. And overall, barring, you know, some small pullbacks around this region and, you know, maybe even a back test once again of the, the value area low, the range low. Um, in general, I'm anticipating this range to get rotated back to the upside, uh, back towards the $70,000. We've got an untapped quarterly level up in this region up here. And this is a high time frame outlook, right? So once again, just barring, you know, meaning that, you know, you still have some potential to kind of, you know, wiggle around in this region here. But overall, I anticipate this to move higher, right? We're going to discuss a little bit more of the, you know, lower time frame things, why this, you know, drop happened right here after we saw this nice little rally up towards 66,000, almost 67,000 last week. Uh, and then we got a small pullback, really, I mean, decent pullback at the end of the day. I mean, pretty much just, you know, gave back this whole little rally right here. Um, but we'll take a look at that here in a second. But overall, like I said, on a high time frame, we're back inside this range, potential to come back and back test this region. You know, 60 to 61 is actually an area I have uh, my eyes on for a couple of things I might note here in the video. But otherwise, you know, anticipating higher, right? Uh, and, you know, a reminder that, you know, when we came down and made, you know, this little swing low down here at 52K, we were looking for a potential harmonic uh, to, you know, form basically at these regions, uh, you know, had we held this level here, right? So down at that level there, which was the drop on September 6th, I was looking for the potential for this harmonic to play out, right? So uh, this is not complete by any means, so you can't necessarily trade off of this yet. You'd need to look for some other confluences to kind of, you know, guide you towards more, you know, upside at the moment, which, like I said, for me, I, I 
I do anticipate more upside here. Uh, and then I'll be looking for this to complete around this seventy-five dollars to $78,000 region, um, which would obviously take us into new all-time highs, right? So that is kind of one of the bigger pieces that I've been looking at uh, for this rise here. And a big portion of why I was looking for this to have a reversal here was was Ethereum. Uh, had a major pattern that played out, hit target. Uh, and uh, I was anticipating a major bounce out of Ethereum. So when we have that, obviously Bitcoin wouldn't have been without it. So I was looking for something that aligned with Ethereum's move, uh, and this was it, right? So, uh, and mind you, in the leading crypto discord, uh, pointed this out uh, back when we were at 56 to 58K, I believe. Uh, you know, it's targeting $54,000, uh, really, uh, and then down to 50, right? So 50 to 54K, not like I got the exact, you know, bottom to a T or anything like that. Uh, and then I was looking for 54K to get reclaimed as this was our current ranges value area low, right? So we essentially rotated this range. We came down, we pierced it once again, back tested it right here. Okay. And was looking for that rotation upwards, right? So we hit the high side of that range there, broke out. We're essentially back testing it now. So it's something to kind of be aware of. Although, like I said, I do see a world where we kind of come down a little bit more, maybe take these lows right here, um, but ne not necessarily have to. Uh, and then like, you know, targeting still more so to the upside uh, overall with the higher level, right? Like, so you might see some interim moves uh, overall, but you know, for me, I'm still targeting up to 75 to $78,000 Bitcoin. Now I mentioned earlier how you could have been looking at this price action here, how you could have traded it, or just once again, just at least understand the movements so that they don't like shock you, surprise you and make you just, you know, get really panicked thinking that, you know, the market is about to just collapse, you know, the bear market is here, whatever the case is, right? Just like the emotions aside, we had a really huge impulse move to the upside. We closed it over the weekend. And then a, a, one thing alone is if you look around, right, the October and the up only and like, while I do still anticipate upside, it's, it's still, it's not going to just let everybody hop on, um, you know, especially, you know, at these levels, like just think about it, right? If anybody got in, around those lows that we were pointing out back here well hey you're you're well protected even if you get a, a major pullback you know to like you know all the way back down to like 58k but if you're getting in which most people probably did right here you know what do you got you got all these lows still intact too which doesn't necessarily have to happen but this is just a recipe for us to come down sweep that knock everybody out that got long right here had a really nice you know a couple of days enjoyed the weekend where they're you know sitting in profits and just waiting for october to occur tomorrow uh and then just see that everything just kind of rocket out of here this is just you know how the market moves right we, we get these moves you get these ranges uh the ranges just get bigger right so uh in a bear market or in like a slower downtrend or anything like that you get the small moves the boring moves that just feel like nothing's going on and then in a bull market, a bull trend, you get these huge moves to the upside, but then they're going to give up some huge pullbacks, right? So uh, overall, the trend may still be up. And then even just thinking of this, right? Look how we've pu pushed up. We had a you know pretty decent pullback. You push up, pretty decent push pullback. We push up, you know, we could still have a little bit more of a pullback here. Overall, we'll still be pushing up, right? So in, in that sense. Uh, so let's take a look at how we could have dealt with this and what really occurred here, right? So we had a new day, new data, right? It's kind of uh, the mantra there. And uh, we started off this week uh, today, te technically last night at uh, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, right? Is the uh, new week open. And basically, basically, this is what we had, right? So uh, you had your weekly open right here, all right? And we essentially lost that right off the rip. And that was also our August high. So essentially, you lost last month's high and the weekly open right to begin with. We had a nice previous week range. This is last week's data that we can work off of for this week. Generally gives us a couple of really nice uh, targets, especially, you know, towards the down, you know, in this sense, when you get a pump, you generally have a, uh, a range below you. And then same thing, vice versa. If we get a big dump during the week, the next week, we probably get a nice pump to the upside because we have all these regions above now. And uh, yeah, essentially, you know, when we come into these, you know, I'm targeting the weekly naked point of control, which is exactly where we've come down to and hit uh, right here at 63,400. Uh, we front run a couple of other levels here, you know, just below us, we've got a new untapped daily level. So this is a daily level of support down below that has not been back tested yet. Uh, doesn't necessarily have to, right? But I, I do anticipate it to get met. Uh, and then as far as like, you know, looking for any type of upside at the moment, uh, for me, you know, the short was definitely up here. Uh, and this is hindsight, of course, looking at it here. But like now looking for a potential long, you know, could you long right here? You could, but it's pretty much right in the middle of a range. It's not the ideal entry. And that's, you know, for me, I look for the most ideal fresh entry, you know, type of areas, right? And 
a lot of people look to these regions as like liquidity sweeps, whatever you want to call it. Um, I mean, I guess that really is what it comes down to, right? And, and you know, like I said before, you have so many people that probably went long in the middle of this area because not everybody's getting these exact lows, right? Uh, although we did actually take a, sh uh, a long in the uh, leading crypto discord right at this low. Uh, and we closed it out just about at this high, right? This was a weekly naked point of control right here at 66,300. Majority of people are not getting in on these lows. And the reason I did here was just a simple, you know, sweep of the previous day low. But getting back to the example is that most people are coming in with their longs, probably around the middles of these areas, or maybe even at the highs, right? You get the breakout traders um, coming in. And where are their stop losses? Everybody's stop loss for this region is right here. Uh, anybody that's moved their stop loss up, you know, is right there. So, um, once again, it doesn't have to happen, but that's just the best area to look for. If you're going to be looking for a long is to come down and sweep those lows uh, and then to, you know, get a reclaim, you know, when you want to kind of have some regions you want to be aware of. So for us, it's a simple previous week low for one. Uh, and then uh, you can look to even get back in the range here, like 62.7 if we get this. But uh, overall, looking to sweep these regions here uh, and then come back up for, for the long, right? You know, you want to have a stop loss, obviously, to protect you, because if you do go down a little bit more, uh, that 61, 60 K area does look uh, a little interesting to me as well, uh, as that is going to be our, uh, monthly average, uh, for, for October, right? So, uh, that'll generate tonight. Uh, that'll be a target for the month of October. Uh, and just something to be aware of once again, does not have to hit. Uh, we'll be looking for potential setups, uh, maybe to take us there, or, you know, if we get down to it, it could be a potential long entry there. that would be well below these areas right here. So it's just something, uh, that I'll be, you know, updating as we go. So at the moment, a pretty simple outlook on the higher time frame. I do anticipate meeting 60, uh, 75 to $78,000 Bitcoin on the lower term time frame. Uh, while we don't have to come down to these levels, that is where I'd be looking if I was looking for a fresh entry, right? I'm looking to take a new long or anything of that nature. Um, and honestly, for this region here, and there's the timing, you know, I'd really only be looking to take that short term long because Coming in at these levels, you know, you, once again, you're talking $62,000, right? Bitcoin, if you're coming in with leverage positions, you know, you really don't want to be, this is not the, this is not as ideal as, you know, 54,000 even, right? Uh, you are talking about being a, you know, really up here in this uptrend with, you know, even if you're a five, four or 5% pullback, you know, is something that you got to be, you know, prepared for. So if you're using any type of leverage, most people are not using leverage properly but anyways you know looking for a potential you know short-term trade or just in general looking for the potential of what bitcoin could do this is my shorter time frame ideas that we're probably going to come down here sweep these regions and i really only look for a run back up to the week open and daily that's up here at about 66k uh, and then kind of reevaluate as we get there right uh, because once again tomorrow i'm going to have uh, fresh updates for all uh, you know, the the new monthly uh, averages, the new quarter, right? It's the end of the quarter today. So uh, we will have new quarterly targets as well to kind of work off of new quarterly ranges, new monthly ranges, all kinds of things. So uh, it's a really a time to kind of, you know, really be paying attention and, you know, be strategizing, right? Because the up only idea is not going to work uh, for most people, I'm assuming at least, right? So, and when I say that, I mean stuff like this, right? Where the other day, just a couple days back, we get this nice little pump. It wasn't even anything crazy, but it is a decent pump, six, 7%, right? How bullish was everyone, right? And even myself, I was anticipating 67K. We went to 66.5, okay? But I also was able to realize and adapt to this price action that shifted and changed and due to the timing right because we we're coming to the end of the week when everybody sees a pump it seems like it's up only meaning that literally it will never pull back and then you get these small pullbacks which it only hurts the people that really came in right here right anybody else that's been sitting in you know from positions lower and you know hopefully even lower than that you know as far as your longer term plays you know this shouldn't be really anything to, to ride home about but it is going to be something that you know causes the short term day to day you know, worry and, and stress, I suppose. Um, but overall, this was a really technical move. I look for this move every single week. I post updates about this in the Discord every single week, every Sunday night, basically. Uh, and this was a perfect one. And the only way it could have been any more perfect is if we would have swept the high uh, before getting it. But losing this uh, August high and the week open was an easy one, right? That would have been your entry, stop loss above the high here. Target would have been the uh, point of control down here, which was a nice 3% move, once again, short term. And then one, you know, if you're not going to be actively trading this, at least just to know that, all right, that's a very technical thing to see, you know, we still may even come down, sweep these lows. And then overall, you know, I'm at least looking higher, right? So 
Uh, that is the the short of it for for Bitcoin. Ethereum has a really tight range right now, right? Right where we've been trading over the last week and a half. Um, basically rotated it to start the day here today. Uh, nothing really too crazy. It's actually a smaller move. If I eh, about the same as Bitcoin, um, but overall, yeah, looking for same deal. You know, ideally you always want to look for those previous week lows or, or just a low or the high, right? For the for the decent entry. That one of those situations where people always say. Uh, your stop loss should be your entry, right? Because people can't be, you know, are not patient enough. Uh, so what happens is people enter in these regions right here. They'll put their stop loss right below that low, come down, <laughs> take those stop losses out, you know, and then we we run from there, right? So uh, something you want to kind of be aware of. Uh, for me, I actually really like this weekly pivot, which is the average of price uh, from two weeks ago, actually. So it's not even, you know, this week's one, but it's just something I've kind of kept on here. Uh, and the reason being is that that's going to be the new monthly average as well that generates tonight. Uh, so for me, looking for Ethereum to come down, you know, to this 2489 region, uh, and then I'll be looking for the next, you know, long position there. Uh, definitely want to see the previous week low reclaimed if we do get this little level here. And then, you know, basically I'll take it up to, you know, that 2766 uh, region there. Uh, similar to Bitcoin, though, this is just a short term outlook here. On the higher time frame, uh, once again, same thing as Bitcoin. When Bitcoin came down to 54,000, uh, ETH came down to my target, that 2100. This is where I went really heavy back into altcoins, really heavy back into Ethereum after waiting from literally selling back in March um at uh, $3,300 ETH and then you know tons of altcoins around that uh, time as well I've been waiting and waiting and waiting right and uh, I had targeted actually this $2,000 low uh, 2100 I guess it got to down here uh, off of an older uh, harmonic pattern as well from the 4k high uh, and I wasn't actually able I had a short in I was able to close the short around here but I wasn't able to you know pick up any ethereum there because uh, it was just so quick but I waited we came down to these regions. I noted that, and once again, I could, you know, the market could still collapse. I don't know what the market is going to do. I'm just trying to, you know, formulate an edge uh, and position myself as well as I think I, you know, best. Um, but at the moment, both Bitcoin and Ethereum came into some key levels. Uh, you know, same deal as uh, Bitcoin. We were coming into the overall range low that we were trading in at this time. Uh, and uh, we were potentially, you know, this is something that I'm, I'm, putting out there as a possibility, this pattern to, you know, form, it's not something that has to form by any means. And it's definitely not something that you can trade off of because it's not complete. It's almost like, you know, identifying a head and shoulders, but you're, you know, the third, the, the, the right shoulder isn't formed yet. Right. Like it, but it's something you're kind of aware of. Right. Um, Cause also if this does, you know, complete, I don't want to be the guy that's like, Oh man, I'm just going to start buying up here when you're basically buying the top of it. This is a bearish pattern. Uh, I'll say uh, when it does complete it's bullish on the way up uh, and then it gets a pullback. Right. So uh, overall I'm still targeting uh, 3,800 um, for ETH in that region and, and time frame, probably, you know, next coming weeks and months, not to be something that happens overnight, you know, maybe November, December time. But uh, yeah, so that's the overall there, you know, from the entries around this region here, looking to take it up to that region there for, you know, at least for now, and then we'll reevaluate as time goes on. So short term, you know, I'm really liking this uh, 2489 area, all right, uh, for, for maybe a little dip a little bit lower here, uh, and then we'll see if we get a run. And then from there, uh, the $27, $2,800 level is kind of the short term area I'd be looking for, which is, you know, 10% move, nothing crazy. Uh, and then overall, looking for this uh, $3,800, right, in the next coming weeks and months, which is about 40 to 50% on ETH. And if you, uh, you know, we can all imagine that if ETH is going to see a 40, 50% move, and then the altcoins will probably be going, uh, you know, pretty, pretty nicely also. So to wrap up the video here, I just want to kind of point out if you would like access to the Leading Crypto Discord, where I post nonstop updates, uh, my analysis, my outlooks, uh, my actual positions, my portfolio. Uh, everything and anything I use, utilize tools, resources, uh, included academy that covers all the you know tools and indicators and everything, all the settings I use, how I use them. Uh, be sure to check this out. Um, today, the you know end of September is the last day that I'm going to have the 14 day free trial on here. So uh, give it a try. It's like I said, completely free. 14 days. Come in, check it out. If it's not for you, obviously cancel before you get charged. Um, but I got daily market updates in there, uh, the included CBO Trading Academy, which is, you know, getting updated as we go. So it's not even fully complete yet, but you have plenty of content already in there. Discord community where you can chat with, you know, others as well. And it's a simple, simple Discord 
Uh, this is literally literally just these few channels right here, right? So three of them are just for me only. So my my updates uh, for everything, uh, the CVO Academy video updates for members only. So exclusive video updates, chat room where everybody can kind of chat. Anybody can post crypto charts here and even stock charts, right? So we talk stocks as well. So uh, and this was actually that trade where I uh, closed uh, over the weekend, right? From that 62.7, uh, basically right at 65,700, right? So glad I did because it pretty much gave it all back today. As always, thank you so much for watching. Watching. Hope you all are doing well, and I will catch you all in the next video. Until then, everybody, cheers.